Uh, you've had a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, I... Not me. <laughs> no? <laughs> Anything you want to talk about or you want to talk about disagreement? Uh, I don't know. Um, I have so much going on. Um, we can talk about disagreement. Okay. Well, I just, I have a little trivial little list. Hopefully we get bogged down on the first thing, <laughs> you know, okay. because that's the idea, right? So, I have to say, yeah, there's not a lot of this I have strong feelings about, but some of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of you might just say, don't know, don't care. Yep. <laughs> so uh, here, I've got, I've got it written down here. Chemtrails. Don't know. Uh, I, I don't care. <laughs> Okay, you don't know, and I don't care, so uh, we don't get tripped up. Rats. September 11th. Huh. I thought it was sad. I think it's sad that so many people died. I think it's sad that people felt the need to do that to other people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I feel the same way. Um, yeah, uh, global warming. Global warming. So I just know what you hear about it, you know, and uh, I don't, I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but I don't watch news at all oh. I feel like I get a fairly balanced input about things I live in a very conservative place but I think mainstream information tends to be liberal so I think I get both sides um, just from what I hear people talking about I hear people say what just comes up um, the, I watched a video at the planetarium about the effects of global warming on the ice um, icebergs. Um, and that was really interesting. And I, I tend to think it is a thing. I don't feel like there's no such thing as global warming. Um, I think that people seem to have good evidence that it's happening. I think, think that the this I don't trust as much, but my perception of the weather seems to be changing. Like it feels like the weather's just changing. So yeah, cherry picking, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like my experience of the weather is not going to tell me whether that's happening, uh, whether global warming's happening, but it does feel like data, oh, data. Yes. Yeah. I have some feels about this one. Um, I, I think it reveals a little bit of my anti-alarmist anti you know there, there's two sides of everybody i have an anti-alarmist side and uh so you know i'm but the the oceans are acidifying and that could be c catastrophic to ocean organisms uh it's going to be expensive to move a lot of cities inland florida's going to start getting expensive you know bangladesh so yeah, that's about, I guess, I have some feels, but I don't quite understand the, it's the biggest problem facing humanity. But, yeah, it's definitely real. Let's see, r minimum wage. Well, can I say a little more about oh, yeah. global, global warming. warming? At least, so I read a book that at least made me feel like it had a solution for the problems of global, global warming. And that was, which it was not like, uh, oh, this is going to happen and it's going to solve the problem. But it's if we could get people to do this, this could make a big impact. And that is um, to do regenerative farming and to start using um, different farming and agricultural uh, methods that 
don't that put the carbon back into the soil where it belongs and and from what i can tell by the things i've read that seems to actually if we would change our agricultural practices we would solve that problem we would we if could we, we can if was willing to do that then we, yeah. we could solve that problem it, it, it's a problem of human nature and cost and yeah it species are going to be hard to bring back yeah we can we can we can drive fly airplanes over the poles right now and cool the earth down some people don't want to because they don't want us to rest on our laurels but we we can modify the climate if we, you know for you know national budget level you know cost so yeah, there's a lot we can do. And I heard a TED talk that said, our grandkids will be so rich, this will be trivial for them. <laughs> so, I don't know. But, no, I, I, it's sad. The, 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 the extinctions and all is really yeah, sad. The ocean um, pollution and damage to me is really, really sad. I mean, well, and it's not just sad. You can't have the oceans starting to become toxic and it not kill humanity and life. I mean, eventually, <laughs> like, that's a big problem, right? Like, right. oh, huge. <laughs> I, right, if the, I, if, yeah, I, if the plankton and the whales and the corals are stressed out, mama, no, ain't nobody happy. Right. I mean, because, yeah, the ocean is, Mother Earth is our mother, and the ocean is also our mother like we can't just say oh well <laughs> these yeah. things are happening it's going to be fine eventually it's not going to be fine i mean so i mean alarmist i don't i don't know but i do know you can't just kill the sources of life and have life continue like this just doesn't work well we're so, not disagreeing here <laughs> <laughs> if the land is getting denuded of nutrients and everything and the ocean is getting poisoned then you don't have a lot to stay alive on so yeah yeah, yeah. um minimum wage minimum wage i would like to earn more than minimum wage yeah <laughs> that's about okay. as much as i know about minimum no um do you mean like whether we should have a minimum wage or what it should be? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About yeah. Does the does does the issue bring up any feels? I mean, I don't know because I'm not aware of um, I'm not aware of really the issues around it. Like to me, it seems like well, it's a good thing to have a minimum wage, but I don't know the negative outcomes of having it or what people feel like are the negative outcomes of having a minimum wage. It, it seems like people should be guaranteed to be paid a fair amount for what they're, yeah. and I, it doesn't, I'm not so anti-government that it bothers me that the government, I, I just don't have a lot of strong political feelings about that. It seems to be working. Okay. So unless you tell me it's not, I, I, it doesn't bother me to try to protect people that need protection. So I don't know. I'm, I'm perceiving that possibly you're a little more naturally moderate than I am. I come you're by my nuance with, with hard work because I got feels about these things. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. my conservative yeah. is in there really strong, really, mm -hmm. really militating against minimum wage. So I, I, I have passionate feelings that cancel each other out. So is I'm not because kidding. is that because you tend to think that capitalism would work? Like we would just if if you didn't want a job from people that didn't pay enough, you'd go get a job somewhere else and then those people would have to raise their prices and then so nobody needs to regulate it. Is that kind of the idea? No, I think that's the fallacy. But Somewhere in there is the, 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 but somewhere along there is the passion. The passion is that price, okay, I've, I've stripped this down personally to the bare minimum. Market freedom means no price controls. 
Okay. You can make all the rules. You can try to get all the rules going, you know, lots of rules, you know, no slave labor, don't pollute, blah, blah, blah. But when you tell someone how much something has to cost, including their own labor, mm. I, I take that as as the fundamental the fundamental do not cross line of market folly mm -hmm. i i will i'll let you do any experiment you want so i see minimum wage as a band-aid because there's a problem so i don't go to the blind faith level of the market will work it all out no the market gains need good rules if Monopoly didn't have good rules, no one would buy it. Settlers of Catan didn't have amazing rules, no one would play it. And so uh, the market needs good rules. We just don't know what rules will create the intuitive equity that you want, that you're talking about, that I care about. It, it's, it's, neg it's, It's, it's terrible. It's, 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 I don't know the word. It's just, it's negligent. It's, I don't know the word evil, you know, to just say, oh, the market will take care of it. And it doesn't take care of it. You've mm -hmm. got to set the rules. You've got to make it so, in my hypothesis, employers can't monopolize employees. Mm. That they can't pretend like the employee is one of the family and then treat it simultaneously like a, 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 re, a, a market uh, relationship and a family relationship. It's all confused. So, no, th that's all just stuff that I, you know, have thought long and hard and talked to somebody I was able to talk to about who saw things differently and. It's at the root of what I do every day, my 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 NPS company. So, yeah, I've got feels about it, but we don't. We're not going to probably disagree. I don't think. So, I, if I understand what you're saying, you're saying you wouldn't go so far as to say, the market will make it so that workers aren't mistreated. You wouldn't say that that would necessarily happen, but you do feel like maybe minimum wage isn't a good rule to set because. You believe, it sounds like, in free markets where prices are not set, including the price of your own labor. or And so in that case, sorry, I just got off on a, what if the, what if the employee didn't set the wage the employee did? Employer, anyway, sorry. I got off on a wondering what it would be like if you really were selling your time instead of anyway. Um, sorry. So, but you think that there are rules that you could set. Maybe you're not proposing any specific ones, but you think theoretically there would be rules you could set that wouldn't involve price fixing. Yeah, and those would be more long-term satisfactory. One of the one of the clues to me that minimum wage is not the ultimate answer is you got to keep tweaking it. Always got to keep tweaking it. Yeah. What do you have any ideas of rules that would serve a similar purpose to minimum wage but wouldn't affect price? Yeah. Um, I don't know that they'll work, but they're <laughs> they're ideas. Make it illegal for people to offer a certain perk packages that, that, that confuse the fact that it's a market transaction. You work, I pay for you. End so what of kind deal. Of are you talking about? You don't have paid vacation. You don't have uh, medical insurance. You don't have, you disconnect all these things. You don't have the keys. Yeah, you don't have the keys to the company uh, vacation lodge. You, you're not on salary. So you're saying it's just a you work. I pay you for that work. That is it. That's all the, the recompense you're going to get from me on any level. And I am not even allowed to hint that something else is a 
perk that you get because you work for me. Yeah, that's one angle. The wage. That's one angle. Yeah, that's one angle. And that's all aimed at clarifying that you don't own me. Mm. You don't own me and you're not making up for the fact that you're acting like you own me. I'm here working for you and you're paying me. Uh, another possibility, and, and this is difficult because you have to run a company. You have to have people there at shifts. So I'm, I'm, I'm conservatively anti-union. Unions are a great idea. Union busting is evil. Uh, getting together with all the people at work and saying, hey, let's, we're not going to work, you know. There, there ought to be good rules about unions. You mean they should be allowed to do that? They should, they should be, be allowed. allowed. This isn't fair. Let's all work together to change this. Yeah, the unions end up being a little bit too powerful lobbyists. And like every organization, it's a collective ego that wants to perpetuate itself. And so, you know, in the, in the, in the implementation, it's more ugly than in the theory. But, I, no, collective bargaining is mm -hmm. a great great idea uh, because that's the solution to shift work I need you to be there 30 hours a week at these times at this station I need you to do that for this pay for this pay so I do own you 30 hours a week well I'm hiring you yeah <laughs> I'm hiring you you need to make yeah it's, it's tough it's tough. Yes. You got to run a factory. I get it. So I don't know. I'm nuanced. Mm. Uh, got rent controls. Same similar subject. Rent controls. Yeah, and I guess I just don't know enough about all the things that surround these things to have okay. very strong opinions because yeah. I'm not aware of the problems. Um, okay. I'm not aware of the problems they're meant controls are meant to solve. I'm not aware of the problems that they then create. I'm not really very educated about some of these things. Same so, with yeah. me. Same with me. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I don't think they should exist. But if they do, there must be a problem. And I feel like... I feel like while you say you're not an expert, I think it's an interest that you have and you like to think about it and learn about it, which... I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you probably know more about it, have thought more about it. Yeah. Not much for rent controls. Gun control. Oh. <sighs> wow. I don't like guns. Yeah, I don't like. I wish gunpowder had never been invented. That's my gut reaction is just that I don't really like guns or the idea of guns. I understand the idea that if you don't let me defend myself, then that leads the people who don't obey the laws to be the ones that have the guns. Uh, I get that. I So I think it should be hard to buy a gun, I guess. And I don't know what it is right now, but I do think it should be... I tend, with my very limited... Um, knowledge about this, I tend to think it should be pretty hard to buy and own a gun. Uh, this, I, I can steel man the case for guns, a feminist case. You know, men are big and scary. Guns are the great equalizer. So, uh, and the, da uh, the data does is not clear about gun laws. And yet, other countries don't have the problem we have. So, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Either. I'd be very interested in knowing, do other countries own guns at the same um, percentage we do? Do Is it actually the women who are buying the guns and using them to protect themselves? Is that really what's happening? Is, uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I'd be interested in knowing the numbers before I... Yeah, be, we both want data. Yeah. We're not hung up so I mean, maybe passionately I'm hung up on my ideology, but I realize that it, that's all just a bunch of hooey, you know, yeah. I need data. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I want to know how easy is it for a criminal to obtain a gun illegally 
should it then be as easy for me to gain one legally as it is for them to gain one illegally? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this is the same thing. So the Second Amendment. Same thing, right? <laughs> same I thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm okay with it. It might be really important. It might, it might be really important to the freedom of our, to, uh, to the freedom of a, of a country. To have the right to bear arms. It might be. I think that the Supreme Court has gone overboard saying there's an individual right to bear arms. They've thrown out the militia part, well-regulated militia, but oh well. Well, yeah, it, it does seem, it does seem unsafe for a population if the government is the only one with guns. Right. If the government has all the power, then that that does seem unwise. So I guess there's that. Police state. Oh, let's get rid of the military. Then we can get rid of our guns. We can all be friends. Yes! Yes. Let's get rid of all the guns, starting with you guys. That's right. <laughs> starting with the, the president <laughs> and the Secret Service. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. James Randi. Oh, I don't even know who James Randi is. Okay. He's a big skeptic. Mediums and psychics. Ah. Oh. Yeah, we could talk about that. How much I know about it is not a lot. I tend to be sympathetic toward mediums and psychics. I also would be very careful about um, who I consulted and what I consulted them for. Um, I feel like there are limits to the amount I would trust that sort of information. However, I have I had friends who paid for me to get a tarot reading once, and it was remarkably um, helpful and accurate. And, and nobody, okay, as soon as someone tells you they're predicting the future, <laughs> I turn I'm off like, your ears. Yeah, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but as far as like being able to accurately reflect where you are, where you've been, uh, possibilities of where you might go, that same every time I've interacted with that sort of thing, which has not has been way more than zero <laughs> over the last few years, um, I have been amazed at the accuracy of and this is me doing it myself a lot of times right like i don't know what i'm trying to say but i'm i guess i'm trying to i guess i believe there's more out there than what we can see and understand um from what i can tell from my own personal experience things such as tarot cards or runes or uh, can be helpful. So that's that. Yeah, I, I feel stupid saying that. I feel like someone can be like, Oh, you're just stupid. That's why you believe that. I don't believe I am stupid because I tend to think that. So there you go. I also don't think they're evil. Which I used to I just think yeah, well, they might be accurate, but they're evil. And I don't think that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't uh, know. I, do think? Uh, well, I I, I think that, that people see their grandma or they might see your grandma or get a message from your grandma or their grandma. I have a problem with when they're, they're they have fi when they have financial motivation to make it look like they're getting a message from your grandma and I have problems with the tricks they pull. If if you're legit, why are you pulling all these tricks? So yeah, yeah. it's I, I I have half a mind to go to one, but I I'm very very skeptical because of the tricks they pull. Yeah, I don't know what I think about, and I don't have much um, 
firsthand knowledge or any firsthand knowledge really about a medium, someone who is going to say, I'm going to communicate with another being. Um, I, I would hesitate to say, oh, that couldn't happen. I, I think I wouldn't say that. Oh, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't I, say that can't happen. Yeah. I'm just um, saying, are, are you blowing smoke? Right. If you're willing to just help me out of the goodness of your heart and we see what happens, and if nothing happens, we both go our way. And if something happens, we say, oh, interesting. That's one thing. Like if, if you're trying to get me to pay you a bunch of money, if you feel like you have to come through for me, whether it's real or not, then yeah, I don't. I don't know what I think. I, I do have a friend who consulted a medium. Her mom died um, when she was 20, pretty young. And uh, she was there, I think, when her mom died. It was a, it was a, a violent death. Um, so she, anyway, she's been struggling and she tried to con contact her mom and she would, I mean, the way she is like, I don't know if it was real or not. I would try and get her to tell me things that only my mom would know. And it seemed pretty accurate, but that's, you know, yeah. and, and it was comforting. So I have, I, have, uh, I have a plea to, to psychics, a plea to mediums and I would like to make a direct plea, okay? I understand that it is better for you to do to make money doing good than doing evil. That is beautiful. Spend your life doing the work of God for money. That's what I do every day. I, I it's brought amazing peace into my life. But Make sure you're doing yeah. good. Yeah. You're. Are you embracing the truth? The truth as it really is. Are you pulling the? Are you faking people? Are you being transparent? Are you seeking transparency? Are you really seeking transparency? That's that's my plea to you. Yeah. Make money doing good. How much money do you need? Are you? If you're making billions and trillions, did you set up a nonprofit foundation for your the the cause of your choice, affordable housing or or clean up the ocean, what have you? That's that's my plea. By all means, use your gift as your life's work. Use your gift as your life's living. Yeah. But be careful. Be careful of the temptation to be a sneak. Yes, I agree with that. I have this book. Oh, it's backwards, or maybe not. No, I don't know it's what... good, I, I think. <laughs> this is all messed up. It's good. Um, which I checked out at the library, and then it was so good and fun that I bought it, which I don't buy very many books. Um, I liked this book, and it made me tend to believe a little more in this sort of thing because it was so much like everybody has these gifts just develop yours some people have learned to listen to that inner voice some people have not learned to listen to that inner voice it's not like people might have a psychic gift but they're not like super special or something i mean maybe they are some people i think probably do have really kind of amazing gifts but i liked the idea that I can learn to just develop that in I do my own tarot readings. I don't need to go pay someone to do it, but maybe it would be fun to go pay someone to do it. Or, you know what I mean? Like I, I actually approach most of this stuff. Is it fun? Do I enjoy it? And with a, an, a, some skepticism, right? Like I am not going to base my life decisions on it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, am I enjoying it? No, that was fun. Yes. Yes, okay. fun fun matters. Yeah, I think fun so. Fun matters. Yes, I love that approach. Well, we're not disagreeing too well here. <laughs> <laughs> we can try harder. Homeopathic medicine. Now, this is where words matter. I got to be careful. Where dilution equals strength. Oh. Dilution equals strength. Dilution equals strength. I want to limit 
Yeah. Homeopathic is, medicine. You, we, we've got this medicine. Let's see. Like cures like. Uh, so we maybe we have a poison and we diluted it down so much that we're not sure there's any atoms left in the bottle. And we're going to give this to you and it's going to cure something. So I guess I haven't, I'm not super aware of that idea okay. of dilution equals strength. That seems kind of silly to me. Yeah. Okay. From a, I, well, it's placebo, and that brings us to placebo. So we've already talked about placebo. So, okay. And, and, and you know what? That goes back to the previous subject. Are you being transparent? Are you really doing good? Yeah. Yeah, because you, if you're using the power of placebo, well, it is here, tough. I was going to say, cause just tell people you are, but then <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> this is the problem. It's just like, it, for some reason, this reminds me of Donald Trump. He has a psychological superpower. And there's a psychological component to humans. And you sometimes you, you man, you can't be totally transparent. This is really maddening. This is really maddening. Like to, at my quartet practice tomorrow night, do I tell them, okay, now we're doing this chord progression. It's a, you know, it's from the tonic to the supertonic, and then we go to the submediate, and then we're going to go to the uh, the dominant, the dominant of the of the <laughs> super of the supertonic, which will then <laughs> do a Neapolitan, you, you know? No, no, no. Or do you just say, let's start at measure fifteen? Let's, okay, basses, sing this note. Okay, now tenors, sing this note. Okay, now you do what, uh, like, Jacob Collier or Bobby McFerrin does. Okay, you people up, you people down. And they feel and they experience something wonderful. So, yeah. Okay, well, we're not going to disagree too much on that. Well, I mean, <laughs> if we just say... Alternative medicine. I think we could have a more interesting conversation about alternative medicine. <clears throat> yeah. I also think if we went to things we've talked about before, there's probably been times we've schmoozed over disagreements. Already today. Have we? I don't probably. think so. I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean there's. There's things where I'm like, I don't know what I think about that. I don't know if I agree with that or not. Yeah. But that's that's more where we've been today. Yeah, the problem is when we both are passionately opposed. Let's see, uh, polyamory. Okay, I have feelings about polyamory. And they, they, we might disagree. I don't know. Um, I have no problem with polyamory. I have... To me, well, I, my feelings about um, relationships of any kind, I guess, should be that they should be open and honest and people should be kind. And if that's happening, I really don't care what else is happening. So that's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I agree. And I kind of sort of came to the uh, working thought that most people are really the happiest in, in serial monogamy, which is what humanity does. So, And I would disagree with that. Oh, I, well, I, I, it's what people aspire to. I don't know if it's what they're happiest to, but that's what they aspire to. I think that's true. I think society has made marriage the thing. And in my opinion, marriage... Okay, you're not saying marriage, you're saying monogamy. I said, yeah, serial but monogamy. Saying, yeah. Oh, so you're not even saying the same person. You're saying, I have a person until I don't have that person, and then I have another person until I don't have that. But I'm not having multiple people at the same time. Uh, most I've, people, most people. I'm not saying everybody. I, I This is not a judgment. It's not a judgment. Yeah. It's, it's just a no. working conclusion. Well, so this is what, these are my thoughts. Because I definitely think most people, uh, that's the ideal in our society. I agree with that. And so I think most people are looking for that because that's what they're told is 
the way it should be. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, but the, the number of people that cheat on other people suggests that not everybody is happy in serial monogamy. Um, and I think people would be better off if it was allowed socially to say, I don't do well in monogamy. I feel a need to have multiple people in whatever way. So polyamory is when you actually have emotionally intimate and physically intimate relationships with multiple people. Yeah, let's define that. Uh, I, I, I picture it as a household of three men and two women who, who, oh, who that's their relationship. Right. And, and my understanding, and it, that is definitely limited, but what I think is the case that you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily go out and have sex with someone else outside of that relationship and everyone feels fine with that. Right. Right. It, it, it could be a closed deal. It might not be in the same house. Right. And, so, yeah. So there's that. There's also just an open marriage where it's we hang out together, we do well together, we know we really always want to come back to each other, but we're very open with mm -hmm. having other experiences with other people. And some people might say, I don't want to know about it or I don't care whether I know about it. And some people might say, I want to talk about it first and I know what's happening yeah. and that's and I feel like to me, I don't care. That's your relationship, you figure it out as long as you're open and honest and everyone knows what's happening and there's no deceit, right? So, to me, it's the deceit. Let, so let me ask. So you're, you're saying that if, if we could resolve with complete certainty all uh, disease issues, we could resolve with complete certainty all reproduction issues, that uh, you, you could have perfect contraception and perfect, uh, you know, contraception, you would not have any problem. Uh, again, I'm, I got one little thing in my mind. You're, we're not making any representations about ultimate human... Uh, uh, survival. Uh, gratif right, right, survival, but I'm real self-realization. This is, we're not making any representation that this is going to lead you to nirvana. But we're just like, hey, we're, we're not going to judge you. You're right. But if you could resolve all the issues, I'm only resolving disease and I'm only resolving reproduction. You're going to say it's your path. Walk it. And it might Walk not. It it, with love and honesty. Seek love. Seek honesty. Seek love, seek honesty. You may not end up the, there in the end, but you're welcome to be there the, right now. You mean at love and honesty? or No, no, no. I mean polyamory or oh. any given. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I feel like... So, so honesty encompasses the reproductive and, and disease issue. You need to resolve those. Yeah, you need to be communicating those. about that. You need to yeah. consider those. You should all feel comfortable with whatever is on the table for those things. Or, um, So, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's say those things aren't resolved, but somebody just loves to sleep around just all the time. They just love to, and they aren't too worried about getting disease or whatever. I think that's okay for that's them okay. to do that. Even if... Okay, I, I, I have to throw in, right? I, I, I'm trying to agree. I, even if I have to no, throw in... Agree. Well, uh, that's, this might be a good subject. Um, <laughs> even if I have to throw in, if that's what you want to do right now, I, it, I, I'm not going to say that's going to bring you... That's going to be where you're going to end up. But again, you can if you want. Right, because, but I, so I sense maybe, maybe you can tell me if this is true or not, no. that you're coming from the idea that you're going to be happier if you end up with one person. No, I don't think no? so. No, no, no. No, I don't know. I really yeah. don't know. And I have a question. Yeah. Do you and I 
have any duty to propagate the species? I don't think we do. Yeah. So we need to be true to our inner voice. And if our inner voice tells us to be a great mother, a great father, then, then we should be free to do that. If our inner voice tells us not to be a great mother and a great father, that might lead to the greatest salvation of humanity. Well, I think so. I think if we tomorrow, nobody who didn't truly want to have a child and wasn't truly ready to love a child, like really love yeah. a child, wasn't allowed to have a child. Now, I'm not saying I think that should happen. I am not saying I think that should happen. But I do think humanity might change very quickly if we only had children who were being loved and nurtured really well. I love that. You want to hear my radical position? Okay. Sterilize all boys when they're 10 or 11 years old. And if they want to, it's a reversible sterilization, very simple medical procedure. You sterilize them when they're 10, and if they want to have kids, that's their business. Wow. Wow. If you wanted to be even more radical, you could have them apply. You, if, you, if you really, you know, in a, in a future where we've got our problems much more figured out than today, and it's not creepy, you could have them apply. But I'm not saying that. No, no way, I'm not, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not saying any of it, but I do think that's a, that is a, yeah, that's a very interesting idea. Um, it's feminist. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 I mean, can you imagine if we only had people who had been truly well loved and wanted and that there wasn't any societal pressure, right? There was no, well, that's the next thing. I'm having kids because it's the next thing. Yeah. Or I'm having kids because it's what I'm supposed to do. Or, I'm having kids because I don't know why, because I just got pregnant. Yeah, I'm checking the time here. Uh, I got it. Okay. All right. Wow. This is this is good stuff. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so I so here's what I've heard. I heard somebody said polyamory is an orientation. It's not just a lifestyle choice. Oh, yeah. There may be some people yeah. who do really well with monogamy. Yeah. There may be some people who do really well with polyamory. And the twain should not necessarily try to make each other be the other thing and, it's and, not gonna work. right and you you might find right right and, and i want to say this out loud it could be a beautiful family yeah it could be a more healthy family conceivably yeah 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 i mean to me to me there are many many beautiful paths Okay. And there are some that for some reason society has put their stamp of approval on. Mm -hmm. But that, in my opinion, does not make them the ideal path. I mean, I don't think society has a great track record. So I'm not going to take their opinion too strong to, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, well, we're reaping a little bit of a problem right now in that population is declining and so people are going to start going back to the fundamentalist you know get married propagate the species the governments are going to start doing that so this is going to be interesting because the problem with that is you have a bunch of old people and not very many young people to take care of the old people and you don't have like to me one benefit i don't i do not think we need to reduce the population or that it's necessarily better to reduce the population. But I just think, okay, if it's happening, what good things could come of this? I totally agree. 
I totally agree. I, I agree There's that from to go around. There's more room to go around. Like people aren't starving. Like, no, I don't from the lazy old rich powerful person's perspective, the sky is falling because there aren't enough young people. I, I agree that that that's a bit of a bit self serving. Yeah, I mean we can find ways to take care of people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that was good. Ron Paul. I do not know Ron Paul. Okay. Bernie Sanders. I don't know Bernie Sanders. I mean, I know that, I think, was Bernie Sanders the one you used to like, or was it Ron yeah, Paul? Yeah, both of them I donated quite uh, abundantly to. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't these, are about these are a bunch of people. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I don't know much about her. Truthfully, I do not follow stuff. Well, that's great. We'll, we'll get through this fast. Tulsi Gabbard, have, Bill I've never Gates. Heard of Tulsi Gabbard. Bill Gates. I know he's a nerdy guy with a lot of money. Okay, Joe Biden. I don't know a lot about Biden. Donald Trump. My okay, my my the impressions I've had of Biden. Um. I and really. <laughs> It's amazing how uninformed I am, but uh, I saw some videos of him and Obama interacting. He seemed like a very nice, kind, good man. Um, I'm a grouchy old Republican. I'm like, he's just a craven politician, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> he's the politician of the politician. Uh, he surprised me. He did a good job as president. Yeah. I don't really know much about it. We need someone that disagrees with that so we can talk about it. Uh, I guess my problem is I just don't know very much about those yeah. kind of things. Well, between the two of us, we might cover things okay with uh, Mike. Yeah, Pence. I'm listening and asking questions. I, I no. skipped over Donald Trump. Oh, you really did? <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> What's going on? Donald Trump? Okay. Um, I have to say, I have very strong feelings about Donald Trump. I don't know if they are justified or not, but to me, I do not like him. <laughs> um, I mean, that's not weird. I'm just laughing because is I'm that a think. new feeling? Is that a new feeling? No, I've never liked him. Like from the beginning, I thought, how is this guy even before he was even the nominee and they just started talking about him? I'm like, this is such a joke. Like this would never happen. Who's even taking this seriously? This is so silly. Next thing I know, he's the Republican candidate. And I'm like, how did this happen? You know, anyway, yeah. Yeah, well, I've never been a Trump fan. He seems like the worst of the worst of masculinity i guess yeah we're not gonna agree we're not gonna disagree on that i'm not anti-masculinity at all but no, i no, i no. do think that yeah we're not gonna disagree on that mike pence kamala harris tim walsh jd vance i do not know anything about them but i am very interested in what your impressions were of the jd vance town hall that you went to um Oh, the Re Republican National Committee chair was there. He's a typical po political junk, uh, partisan. Uh, it, you know, he said something like, Donald, Donald Trump, in air quotes, lost an election. You know, yeah, this is typical uh, partisan. But J.D. Vance, I think, is a, is a little above that. I think he he's kind of like in a very different way a, a little bit of a mike pence how did he get mixed up with a donald trump you know you you, you see the handwriting on the wall and you t hitch your boat to the to the <laughs> ship that's going by and it's 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 embarrassing it's demeaning it's dehumanizing it and, does and it is abjectly embarrassing to see a man like pence or 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 vance Hitch their boat to Trump, but that doesn't do, diminish the fact that they are um, serious, uh, intelligent 
uh, human beings, just uh, corrupting themselves to, to, to an absurd end at this moment. Yeah, it makes me it makes me think. Well, it, it demonstrates a lack of judgment. However, I tend to think that they probably have motives. You know, if I could talk to them honestly, where they could say what they really think and feel, um, I'm guessing they probably have pretty good motives why they're doing what they're doing. And and I could be wrong. Maybe they just have corrupt motives. But um, it's possible that they think he needs someone to. Yeah, they may want to be the adult in the room. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, two more. We're, we, uh, Volodymyr, Volodymyr Zelensky. What do you think? I don't know who that is. I feel so embarrassed saying I don't know who these people are. It might be Volodymyr. I don't know. He's it's the Vladimir. president of uh, yeah. the Ukraine. Uh Okay, Netanyahu. What What are your impressions about him? I'd be interested in hearing about about uh, the president of Ukraine. This is a difficult subject for me because I'm trying to figure out: am I am I am I trying to be a pacifist, or am I trying to be a situational ethicist here? Do I believe that? Ultimately, if we were really wise and could figure out how to harness human energy in a way that's not tribalistic, that we could save a lot of money and effort without killing millions of people. I'm curious, like, are you considering the idea that it might be better to not fight against Russia? Yes, that's always there. As a pacifist, that's always going to be there. If you, as long as you don't disavow your pacifist roots, you always have... I'm reading all these news articles. I'm like, we got to keep sending money to Ukraine. I can't believe I'm saying this. And I'm like, would it be better if they just let Putin invade? You know... You know, in retrospect, I'm, I'm totally like it would have been better if we just let the South uh, just let the South go their way in the United States and not uh, committed the Civil War against them. You know, yeah. slavery would have ended. You know, there's there's uh, sanctions, there's economic pressures. You know, it would have been better not to have the Civil War, and 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 I and I'll go so far as to call Lincoln a control freak. So, you know, I, I, in fact, in this day and age, I say the next frontier is to have a universally recognized right, some sort of right of secession. California can secede if they want to. Texas can secede. Britain can secede from the European Union. So. Yeah. Would it be so, better for Ukraine to roll over and play dead? Play dead. Right. Instead of be dead. <laughs> right. Become dead, yeah. So, yeah, I... I, I Zelensky, you know, rah, 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 you know, I need bullets, not a ride. You know, when they told him, do you need us to take you to safety? He said, I need bullets, not a ride. <laughs> So, no, I mean, oh, well. Netanyahu. I don't know. I mean, I've heard the name. I don't even know. Benjamin Netanyahu. He must be the Israeli president. He is the Israeli president. He's far right. And in my opinion, he's perpetuating the problem. He's, he's, he's undone a lot of the good that that uh, that had been done uh, progress that had been done in the last 20 or 30 years and in response to the atrocities of October 7th when a thousand people were killed he's obliterated the Gaza Strip he's killed mm -hmm. dozens of thousands of people so 
and now the war has expanded to Lebanon and, and Iran, and, and it's so. No, I, I I bless him every day in my prayers. I bless Putin, and I bless Netanyahu that they'll be filled with love, joy, contentment, and peace. That's the end of my list. 